Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, May 31st, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storms and its Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. If you're using free Radius, it's time to update. Now, Radius is a network authentication protocol, and it's often used, for example, in wireless networks to authenticate clients, but can be used in various other setups, in particular for network devices and the like, and to authenticate users to access a network. Originally, the protocol was actually used in dial-up modem farms. If you remember, well, maybe not all of you, when you dialed up uh, to your ISP, you had to provide credentials. They were typically validated using Radius. Now, based on that legacy, Radius itself does actually not protect credentials very well because it's sort of built for that serial, that dial-up connection. So in modern networks, if you're using it over a Wi-Fi network, for example, you typically use Radius over TLS. And then, of course, TLS is not just useful to actually encrypt data, but also to authenticate, for example, that you are connecting to the right server. Now, for TLS, uh, there is a very commonly implemented feature that allows you to resume sessions. So what happens there is that the server keeps track of all the TLS sessions IDs and the keys that go with them. If now a client reconnects, uses an already cached session ID, then the server will just try to keep using these existing keys. The problem with free radius is that if you are resuming a session, that free radius assumes that you are already authenticated, which is not necessarily the case. You could start the authentication interrupt it, and then later resume that session, but you never really completed the initial authentication. So in this case, Free Radius just allows you in without you ever providing credentials. So pretty severe vulnerability, like I say, it only affects this one particular, but very popular implementation of Radius. If your Radius server runs on a Linux system, then it's very likely free Radius that you are using. As a workaround, you can just turn off a TLS session caching in the free Radius server, so then you are no longer vulnerable because sessions can no longer be resumed. And well, Google's project Zero is always interested in vulnerabilities in security software, and lately they have zoomed in somewhat on Microsoft's malware protection engine. Microsoft just released a new update for the malware protection engine. Eight different vulnerabilities are being patched here. Three of these vulnerabilities can lead to remote code execution. And as usual for the malware protection engine, you don't really have to apply these patches. They're being rolled out as part of regular signature updates. So nothing really you have to worry about here. And web developer Ranbar Sik found an interesting vulnerability in Chrome that may make it easier to use the microphone and the camera without the user realizing what's happening. HTML5 introduced an API in JavaScript that you can use to access the microphone and the camera. Now, before you do access the camera or microphone, the user has to give you permission to do so. But once the user has given permission, then a particular website has the ability to record and audio and video at will. In order to mitigate this a little bit, uh, what Chrome does is that it shows a red dot as part of the tab for a particular window that currently uses the camera or microphone. However, as uh, Ran found out, uh, you can actually avoid showing that particular tab by opening a headless window, in which case there is no tab. So as a result, you will not see this indicator. 
So this only affects websites to which you already gave permissions to use the camera and microphone. This is not something that a random website could use to turn on your camera or microphone, but it will make it a little bit more difficult to detect if camera or microphone are being used. And if you're using Amazon's cloud, one of uh, the difficult parts is always whether or not everything is configured as secure as it should be. Summit Route now published a nice blog post uh, where they list six free tools that you can use to audit your AWS configuration. So if you're using AWS or one of the other cloud providers, some of these tools work with more than just AWS. You may want to take a look at their list and see if you find anything useful for you. And if you live in Denver, SANS will be in Denver in about two weeks and uh, they decided to actually have a special social night where everybody's invited to attend the at night evening talks. So Wednesday, June 14th, if you have time in the evening, it starts at 5.15. There are two talks actually, one by Adrian uh, Depro, one of our handlers about So You Want to Be a Pen Tester, and a second one by Mika Hoffman about collecting and exploiting your private internet data using open source intelligence. So if you live in Denver, this may be a nice thing to spend an evening. That's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.